Here at Southampton City Art Gallery, we have a wide range of historic and contemporary portraits. Now, what do I mean when I use the term portrait? At its most simple, a portrait is a picture of a person. So why would an artist choose to paint one? What reasons can you think of? Well, an artist might be paid, might be commissioned to paint the portrait of someone who was rich or famous or important. They might choose to paint a loved one to help them remember them. Or they might simply be really interested in the colours and the shapes and the lines that they see. Now what we're going to do now is to use some of the clues in the painting beside me to discover a little bit more about the person who is being shown to us. So right at first glance, we can see that this is someone important, someone regal. We can tell by the red velvet of the cloak, the ermine fur lining and trim, and the absolutely gorgeous satin and gold embroidery. If you look at his shoes, you can see straight away that these are not very practical shoes, and you probably wouldn't be wearing them going about your daily business. Looking at his head, you can see a circlet of leaves reminiscent of those worn by the emperors of Rome. If you're after some more clues, you can also see around his neck a chain made up of, can you see which animal? If you can't quite make it out, look at the top of his staff and you can see there perched an eagle. And the eagle is there on his chains and on his staff to represent France. Still need more clues? You can actually see the letter for the beginning of his name more than once in this painting. Have a good look and see how many times you can spot it. here in the centre of his throne and here in the hem of the cloak and here in the side of the cloak you can see three times depicted the letter N. Now should I still need further information there's somewhere very helpful I can look. Each of the artworks at the gallery is accompanied by a label and we can see here some more information. At the top of the label, it says Baron Francois Gerard. Now, that's not the name of the person in the painting. That's the name of the artist himself. And next to that name are two dates, 1770 to 1837. What do those dates mean? The year he was born and then the year that he died. Underneath, we have the title of the piece, which is Napoleon, showing us that this is the self-styled Emperor of France, Napoleon, who modelled himself on the emperors of ancient Rome, hence the circlet of leaves you can see on his head. Underneath that, there are three words, oil on canvas. And that's where in the label it tells us which materials we use to create the artwork. So we're seeing that this has been done using oil paint, which is a lovely gooey paint that stays wet for a long time, so it's easy to work with. And it's been done on canvas. Canvas is a kind of material. It's been stretched out over a wooden frame, and then it's been nailed around the frame so that it's ready to paint on. Now, before we move on and go and look at another portrait, there are some other objects in this painting you might have spotted and you might be interested in knowing more about. Firstly, look under his arm, tucked into a sash, is a bejeweled sword. You can see the blade there hanging down next to his cloak. That shows us that as well as being an emperor, Napoleon was also a military leader and we can see that represented by the sword. Over here on this lovely blue cushion, can you see the orb with the cross? What might the cross represent? 
Well, the cross is there to show us that as well as being their military leader, he was also responsible for the church, the church in France. Slightly harder to read is this strange white hand. Can you see it? Attached to a wooden pole. What might that be for? Is it a back scratcher? Is it for smacking people or tapping people or pointing? We get all sorts of answers when we ask that question. It is in fact the hand of justice, showing us that Napoleon was not only responsible for the armies and for the church, but also for the justice system in France. We talked right at the beginning about the different reasons that artists have for creating portraits. This was a commission and Gerard did not paint just one like this. He in fact painted 10. And the reason for that was that these paintings were commissioned by Napoleon to accompany the day in 1804 when he was made emperor, when he was coronated. Of course, in 1804, there were no televisions, no newspapers, no internet. And so people would have been unable to see his picture in any other way. And for that reason, paintings like this were hung at almost every town hall in France. So no matter how important you were, no matter how low you might be in the social structure in France, you would know what your emperor looked like and how important he was. So now we're going to explore a different kind of portrait. But before we do, I'd just like you to take a minute to think about how is this similar to, how is it the same as the Napoleon we just looked at? And how is it different? Well, they're both portraits, aren't they? They're both pictures of people. They're both of men. And they've both been created using paint. They're both paintings. And I think that's where the similarities end. If you want to look at differences, let's start with the background. Here you have a lovely, vibrant, bright pink but you don't have the orb, you don't have the stool, the throne, the drapes, the carpet, any of the objects which in the painting of Napoleon serve to set the scene. What about the style? I think you'll agree, looking at this, um, that it is much less detailed, much more cartoon-like. If you look at the colour palette that's been used, you could probably count the colours in this painting on your hands. If you tried to do that with Napoleon, it would be impossible. They've used a very, very broad colour palette with lots and lots of different shades um, in order to make it look truly realistic. And it could, in fact, almost be a photograph. How else is it different? Remember the Napoleon painted using oil on canvas? Let's have a look at what this is painted on. If you look closely, you can see it has in fact been painted directly onto the wall, which has implications for taking it down. We can't take it down and it has to be painted over in white paint and it takes several coats. What about putting the portrait back up again? Yeah, that's right. It has to be painted again from scratch. And that's where I'm going to talk about how we own this artwork. This is painted over and then it's painted again so we do not own this physical painting. What we own instead is a digital black and white image and a projector is placed here in the gallery and it projects the black and white image onto the wall. Our exhibitions team then trace that image with a pencil and then the next job is to add the colour. And aside from the digital image, what we also own is a list of colours. But the colours we own are not pink, green, red. They're what are known as Pantone numbers. They're absolutely specific colour references. So each colour has to be exactly that that the artist intended. Speaking of the artists, we can find out a little bit more about them. If again, we look at the label.
And interestingly, here you can see not one name, but two, Simon Grennan and Christopher Spirandio. And next to their names, there's only one date each, 1965 and 1964, which tells me that they are in fact living artists. The next line tells us the title of the piece, and the title of this piece is Hakeem, and it was created in 2000. Remember we talked about why an artist would paint a portrait. Why did they choose to paint Hakeem? I don't know. We can tell from the objects in Gerard's painting that he's showing us Napoleon. Who is Hakeem? I don't know, but I'd like to invite you, as I invite our visitors to the gallery, to make up your own stories about who he might be and why they might have chosen to paint him. <laughs>